If you're new to FortiGate Firewall or you're planning to take the NSC certification or if you just want to deploy a FortiGate on your office, then this video is for you. We will look at the step-by-step -step configuration of a FortiGate Firewall running OS 7. Coming up. All right, now if you have a physical FortiGate firewall, just connect your computer to port 1. It should already be enabled with a DHCP server. The, the IP address of port 1 is 192.168.199. So you will probably get an IP address at that subnet. If you do not have a physical FortiGate, just head over to Fortinet support, log in or register with your email. It's quite easy and simple. From there, support virtual machine images. Choose your product, which is Fortigate. Choose the platform, the virtual machine platform. I'm using a VMware player. And just download the um, the um, latest version which is version 7. From there just zip uh, whatever is downloaded to your computer, unzip it and double click on the uh, OVF file and uh, it will allow you to Im import the machine to your VMware. All right, now in your VMware, you will be asked to log in. So the uh, user login uh, starts with an admin, but the password is something that you can configure at the startup. So choose your password. And the next thing that you will do is to uh, use this command, config system interface, edit port. Now choose uh, port one or port two, choose any port that uh, you wish uh, to use as a management port. Let's use uh, port three and set set mode. Now you can use different um, modes such as static or DHCP. Uh, for now, we will use static. And the next thing is set IP. Let's just use the ten dot zero dot eight dot fifty four slash twenty four. And let's set the allow access, which is the management protocols that are allowed. Those, these are the protocols that will allow you to connect to that interface. And let's use HTTP and HTTPS for now. All right, now let's move to my 48 machine. Now on your browser, just navigate to the address that you have just configured as port one or port two. Let's move to my machine, enter your credential admin and then the password that you have just set up and you will uh, start your uh, journey within a FortiGate firewall administration GUI. So that is your FortiGate. We will not look at everything. We will look at what is important. So the very first thing that you will do is to set up an interface, your local area network interface. You already have one interface which is connected to your WAN, your um, ISP. That is the interface that is connected to your ISP router. So you take an RJ45 cable, connect it to uh, one of the WAN ports of your FortiGate, and the second one should be connected to your router. You can set the addressing mode to DHCP, as I did, or you can set a manual or a static IP. Currently, I got an IP address, which will also serve as my interface gateway address. So let's just move over to another interface. You can see that you have several physical interfaces, although I'm running a virtual machine. 
and you can also set uh, a, a virtual interfaces such as virtual lands we will do that later so let's create our first local area network uh, I have already made one so let's just you, you need to press one of the interfaces and add it here at the alias you will name your local area network in my case it will be only LAN you can choose the role it can either be a LAN if you're choosing a WAN uh, interface or a DMZ interface you will see several changes but we're still at the LAN configuration I have uh, created an IP address for that LAN gateway which is 10.0.7.1 that will be my interface gateway and we will also create an address object matching subnet it can be used it will be used later on as we progress uh, here you set the administrative access protocols I have chosen to use HTTPS, ping and SSH and from there I'm moving to my DHCP server which is by default uh, disabled you should enable that and here you set the IP range the pool itself now you can use the full pool or you can use only several IP addresses uh, to be used within that pool I will keep that the same you can uh, click on the advanced feature configure a relay DHCP server if you do not want to use uh, the interface as a DHCP server you can set your NTP server and more there are dozens of videos that I've made that you can look at which will um, show you how you can create different things on your 48 from MAC address access list to a more advanced feature all right the next thing is device detection again it is by default disabled you can enable that so your 40 gate will recognize devices that travels between LAN and the policy that we will soon set up all right let's just enable that so here we have it we have a LAN interface we have an upstream interface that is connected to our router now the next thing that we will need to do is to create a policy a policy that will allow any user that is connected to our LAN interface gets its IP address from the DHCP server to uh, move uh, towards the internet so let's just move to policy and objects firewall policy and let's create a new policy and let's name our policy LAN to WAN. So the incoming interface is our LAN interface. Clients are connected to our LAN interface. The outgoing interface is our WAN interface. Source, now we can limit source by users. We can also create, um, we, create a, we can create address objects uh, for specific devices or machines or a subnet but for now we will use all so anyone who is connected can get out destination again we can uh, limit our firewall policy to only specific destinations we will not do that we will use all which is by the way not a good thing if you're uh, configuring a firewall on your office be granular that is the secret to uh, hardening your 48 to it is much more secure scheduling is always uh, you can create policies for specific devices that will only work on specific days and specific hours but for now we will use always service protocols that we use protocols that we wish our users to use either http ftp and so on again we will not limit them we will use all the next thing is the action itself will you accept or deny is it a deny policy or an accept policy in our case it is accept anyone from our land can get out towards 
on the internet using the WAN interface anytime to any destination. It can come from any source and it can use any service. Now the next thing is the inspection mode, either a flow based inspection mode or a proxy based inspection mode. Now, as the name implies, when you're using a flow based, your FortiGate checks the different packets that flows in the policy itself, it doesn't buffer them. It will check them at the last packet, it will stop and check the file. In a proxy based inspection mode, your FortiGate will actually buffer the whole file, which may cause latency. We will use a flow based mode for now. The next thing is NAT, Network Address Translation. We are using an internal IP addresses, which will be translated to the outgoing interface address when the packets uh, flow from the internal to the external internet. So we will use NAT. Now the next thing is security profiles. You can choose any security profile. Uh, if you're using a flow based mode or a proxy based mode, make sure that you build your security profiles with a flow based inspection or a proxy based inspection. If you are uh, configuring a proxy based security profile and you're using on your policy a proxy based, you will not see these security profiles that you have configured. The last thing is logging. Do you want to log only the security events? Or do you want to log all sessions? It depends on you. Personally, I prefer to use all sessions. So we have our first policy, which is LAN to WAN. The next thing to do is to create a static route. We need to tell our 48 that we have a default route whenever it sees packets that are destined towards the internet and they do not have a specific route in the routing table just move them over to the specific gateway that we will now configure so we will move to network static route create new if you want to create a new default route just leave that with the uh, zeros that actually tells your FortiGate that the destination can be any IP address on any subnet mask. Now the gateway address in our case is our WAN interface. So let's just specify the address itself, which is 10.100.102.1. That's the second leg of our WAN interface that is connected to our WAN interface. Now, uh, we have an administrative distance when we use default route or static route, the administrative distance is 10. When we use DHCP, it is five. Uh, we are not, we will not create another static route, but if we have different static routes, we can play around with the administrative distance and with the priority to make specific routes active or passive. All right. So now we have a default route. So let's just see if everything works well. Let's open up our Ubuntu machine. All right, and our Ubuntu machine is actually connected to our subnet. Let's just take a look at that. We have an interface gateway, which is a 10.0.7.1. That's the default route. That's the IP address that our machine is configured with. And that's the DNS server. Oh. Okay, so it should work. Let's just move over to CNN.com.
and it works we have a full internet connectivity again we have configured our LAN interface we have our WAN interface which is connected to our ISP router we have configured our first policy which is the full access policy the LAN to WAN and we have also created a static route now there are dozens of things that we can also do such as creating a new administrator configuring security profiles uh, but uh, we will not do that in our uh, in this video there are but there are two other things that i want to show you one of them is the get system session list which will actually list all these sessions that are happening on your FortiGate, and we can see that we have dozens of sessions we will abort that command um, to open up your command line you need to press this icon now uh, using the command line will give you the full power to do just about anything on your 40 gig. The second command that I want to show you is the get system status where you can see everything about your 40 gig or almost everything. The things that are really important such as the serial number, the mode that your 40 gig works in either a net mode or transparent mode. Is it using the um, hard disk for logs or for any other things such as web optimization? Are you using several VDOMs? Um, uh, the uh, database, the uh, antivirus and IPS database dates, and much, much more. So that is one of the basic commands that you will and you should use.
All right, now the next thing that we will do is to move to dashboard. Here you can create different widgets that will make your life much, much easier when working with a 48 firewall. I have already created some, just choose the widgets that you wish to apply. And let's look at a very interesting widget, which is device inventory monitor where you can look at the different devices that are running on your network either um, filtering them by hardware vendor software operating system status either online offline and interface now when you click on a device right click on a device you can create a firewall address object you can actually create an object a specific object which is that device you can create a NAC policy if you're working with a 40 switch, you can see matching logs for that specific device. You can do, uh, which makes everything much, much easier. By the way, if you move again to your policy and object file with policy and you right click on that policy, you can fine tune that policy and again, see matching logs, which is an excellent way to see what is happening on your network. All right, that is all for now. If you like that video, just uh, hit the like button and I'll do much, much more videos like that.